All right, biggest key when fishing with spinners is you gotta find a very nice, beautiful, beautiful, pristine water to fish. And then you find that, and you just make a couple casts. Don't fish that, just fish this good water over here. So, Eagle River was overly tough today. So, as kind of a break here slash sanity check, we're hitting another little small creek, I guess you'd call it. And um, I get comments and questions all the time asking me about spinner fishing and stuff still, even though the majority of what I do is fly fishing. So, I thought what I'd do in this video is me and Dallas, I have my fly rod with me because when it starts getting dark and the dry flies start popping off, I can't resist. But me and Dallas are gonna go ahead and give you guys some spinner fishing tips and techniques and just kind of show you guys how we break apart a stream and fish with a spinner. Because one of the best performing videos on my channel was a spinner fishing video I did like almost two years ago now. Um, so I'm gonna recreate that video to a degree, give you guys some more other helpful hints and tips and yeah, that's what this video is gonna be about. So stay tuned and for everybody that's been waiting for a spinner fishing video, here you go. Those are the mountains, that's freaking awesome. Woo! front of you and let it come through the middle of that pocket. Yeah, 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 there you go. <laughs> Called it. That was so funny. Here. There you go guys, beautiful wild brownie. Woo, Dallas. All right guys, so there's a few things that I just take for granted and people like Dallas take for granted um, when we're spinner fishing and that is like some skills and techniques that I can't teach you by talking to you, you just have to get out and do. And one is like casting technique and accuracy. The other is being able to feel the spinner on your rod and know when that spinner is spinning. So when you're uh, reeling in your spinner and the blade is properly rotating, there's a little thump, 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 thump. And when you feel that, you know you're in the money. So there's just some things that I can't teach you by talking to you, but there are some things I can teach you. And the first thing we're gonna go over is casting up creek, up the stream versus downstream. Um, I personally, when I'm fishing small creeks and I'm waiting, I cast upstream every time because naturally when food comes down the current, it's like a conveyor belt. So all the fish are looking up the current, waiting for the food to come towards them. So a more natural presentation is casting up current and bringing your lure down current because that's where the fish are looking, they're expecting it, and that's just in their field of view. You can cast down current and that works a lot because, and the reason casting down current works is because when you're casting, you're letting the spinner sit in that strike zone for a long, long, long time. So when I'm swinging a, uh, or a, a spinner, that spinner is sitting right in front of the fish's face for a long period of time as it drifts across the current. And that a lot of times will elicit a strike when casting up a current might not because they don't have as much time to look at it. Um, I use both, they're both really effective. It really depends. If I cast up current and I don't get anything, sometimes I'll get above it and just hold a spinner in there, especially if I know there's fish in there. Um, but I see a lot of people in my comments on some of my older spinner videos say that they never thought to cast forward. When you think about how fish 
feed and where they look and stuff like that, it makes a lot of sense to cast forward and bring it down. Um, one other quick thing is, if you're standing below the fish, they don't know you're there. As soon as you stand above them, there's a good chance they know you're there. So, if you're in a place with high fishing pressure, casting down may not be your best bet. So, it's just something to keep in mind. But uh, anyway, we're going to keep fishing and I just wanted to give you guys that little tent. tip. Can't talk. buddy. Little rainbow. Got it? Yep, ready? You ready to get the release? Mm -hmm. No slow mo, just get it. All right, guys, so spinners. Um, I don't have a brand that I necessarily like more than the other or dislike more than the other. Like, there's not any brand that I'm partial to, I guess, but this is a Joe's Fly. Um, the thing that I like most in a spinner is a, I just saw a brown trout you to dry, is a Colorado blade. So, the reason I like a Colorado blade is because, is it focused? Mm -hmm. Is because I can cast it up a current or down current or anywhere I want and I can reel it really slowly and still keep this blade kicking. And as long as that blade's kicking, it's attracting fish. So if I cast up current, I can reel it almost just as fast as the current is and keep the blades moving. If I cast it down current, I can literally hold it and the blades will move. I cast it, cast it across, it doesn't matter. Um, and that's super key because that comes back to, again, keeping the lure or fly or whatever you're using in the fish's strike zone as long as possible. And that's the key to catching more fish. Because as long as you have the fly or lure, spinner, whatever you have in front of the fish's face, you have a chance of catching them. So that's just one more tip for you guys. Also, just one random thing. This, the Joe's Flats have uh, troubles on them, but um, we're fishing for wild trout in this stream. So I just saw another dry fly hit. <laughs> but I, I might have to grab the fly rod in a second. But one other just random thing is uh, this Joe's fly has trebles. Um, we're fishing for wild trout right here, so we want to release them into the river slash creek in the, as untouched as possible. So uh, we have cut down the barbs on all of these trebles and stuff. All these, uh, long story short, all these stinking trebles have been cut down so that we can release the fish and it doesn't hurt their mouths or anything like that because I know I'm gonna see that comment in the section, in the comment section if I don't say that. So all these, there's, these are all barbless hooks and all that fun stuff. Wait, so that's a slam for us. Oh. All right, that counts. 
<laughs> that's a slam for us because I've caught a rainbow and a brown. You cut a that's a brookie. Slam on the spinners. Woo! <laughs> I can't believe that. Brown. I gotta back up. I'm falling. Ah! Standing. Brown. That's back to back cast. Oh, Dallas, Dallas. Love barbless hooks, man. Yeah, it's gorgeous. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that spinner fishing video. Dallas put on a little clinic there at the end and caught a brook trout, which actually technically completes our slam. Not that that's really what we are attempting to do, but if you guys are watching this video and you haven't seen the Colorado series, go check that out right now. I'll link that down below or up here, or it'll go, it'll go somewhere, don't worry. But um, you'll get a lot more of these views, a lot more of this type of fishing, mostly with the fly rod, but it's still so much fun to do, so much fun to film, so much fun to show you guys. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this spinner fishing extravaganza. Um, we caught a lot of fish, some of them didn't make camera, some of them we didn't, weren't filming when we hooked them, but it was so fun. It was a good break from all the fly fishing and the hiking and stuff. I didn't even put, I don't even have waders on, Dallas doesn't have waders on. It's nice to just get out and walk and relax a little bit. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and I'll catch you on another episode of Hardman Fishing Adventures. Oh